subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. This month, in a span of just two weeks, three different Mars missions are launching. All of them are going to Mars to study for, among other things, evidence of present or past life. In this episode, we'll have a look at the three missions that are launching, one from UAE, one from China, and one from US, from NASA. And we'll also discuss why so many are launching together, how launch windows work, why researchers keep searching for signs of life on Mars, what the significance of liquid water is, and a little bit about the UAE and the Chinese space program. My name is Sandhya Ramesh, and this is Pure Science. In this year's launch window, which is the time period in which ideally missions to Mars should be launched to reach in the shortest period of time and conserve maximum fuel, we have two new countries that are sending spacecraft to Mars, UAE and China. China we are familiar with. China has been aggressively exploring space in the past few years. They have had a number of satellite launches and they also have a very successful lunar exploration program. Their ongoing lunar missions are the Chang'e missions, which have already seen two successful orbiters and two rovers on the moon. In fact, China became the first country to land a rover on the far side of the moon. It is with this expertise that China is sending a rover directly to Mars on what could be its very first successful Martian attempt. The mission is called Tianwen-1. It consists of an orbiter and a lander rover. China did try once to go to Mars before, when they had placed an orbiter on the Russian Phobos Grunt mission back in 2011, but that mission failed after it reached Earth's orbit and it could not set a course to Mars. So China started developing and working on the Tianwen-1 mission independently. No country has ever sent a lander or rover to Mars directly on the first attempt without first sending a successful solitary orbiter which is what we did with Mangalyaan as well. UAE, on the other hand, has never launched a mission that is not a satellite before. They have not even sent spacecraft to the moon. This mission, called the HOPE mission and also referred to as the Emirates Mars mission, is going directly to Mars. But the Emirates mission is backed by American expertise. The HOPE probe was built by UAE in collaboration with University of Colorado Boulder, Arizona State University, and University of California, Berkeley. All of these have very good space programs and astrophysics programs, and all these universities have a lot of expertise in working on other NASA missions, including lunar and interplanetary missions. The HOPE mission consists of just an orbiter. Both HOPE and Tianwen-1 are less sophisticated missions because they are technology demonstrators and are going there for the first time. Their objectives include primarily studying the atmosphere, mapping the mineral composition of the entire planet's surface, looking for liquid water, and of course searching for evidence of past or present life by looking for biomarkers, which are indicators that show that life existed at some point or does exist now. But next week, NASA is launching a Mars mission called Mars 2020, which is the most sophisticated mission to go to Mars so far. NASA is, of course, a veteran when it comes to Mars. It is the only agency to have successfully operated rovers on the planet. And NASA and Russia, back then Soviet Union, have been sending orbiters to Mars since the 60s and 70s. NASA has sent many rovers like Sojourner, Spirit and Opportunity and now of course there's also the Curiosity rover which is currently operational on the planet. Mars 2020 will have the Perseverance rover which is built on Curiosity's model but is much larger and more complex. It is a very sophisticated rover essentially with the same larger astrobiological objectives of looking for evidence of life. The Mars 2020 mission will also have a helicopter called Ingenuity, which can fly in the thin, wispy Martian atmosphere for about three minutes, up to a height of 10 meters. The Mars 2020 mission will also prepare samples and store them for a future sample return mission that NASA hopes to send to Mars and bring these samples back to Earth. So, 
We have so many missions that are constantly going to Mars. But what is the big deal with Mars? Why is this fascination with it? The most obvious answer, of course, is that it is the closest to us and most easily accessible. But there are other reasons that work in the planet's favor. Mars is surprisingly alike to Earth when it comes to orbital parameters. One Martian day or one Sol is 24 hours, 39 minutes and 35 seconds, very close to one Earth day. We take 365 and a quarter days to orbit the Sun. Mars takes nearly double 687 days, which is 1.88 Earth years. Our axis is tilted 23.5 degrees. Mars's axis is tilted 25.2 degrees. So just like Earth, Mars too has seasons, but lasting roughly twice as long. Mars also has polar caps covered in ice, but not just water ice. On Mars, there's also carbon dioxide ice, which we know here as dry ice. Mars has roughly the same land surface area as Earth because Mars doesn't have any oceans right now. So all of these factors make Mars very comparable to Earth in terms of sending missions there, sending people there and habitability especially the length of day of Mars. But everything else is starkly different. Mars orbits the Sun much farther than Earth does and so it's very cold. The Sun is just a tiny ball in the sky. It's not as bright or as warm here on Earth. In fact, the average surface temperature on Mars is minus 63 degrees Celsius and on Earth it's 14 degrees Celsius. Mars is barren and dry. There is no liquid water on Mars's surface. Its gravity is also very low, about the third of Earth's. And most importantly, Mars does not have an atmosphere. Well, it technically does, but Martian atmosphere is very, very thin and wispy and gases are constantly being lost to space in a process called genes escape. And this has been happening for several million years now. How and why this started and how it occurs is a mystery that a lot of missions are also trying to solve. But Mars is still extremely interesting to us for two main reasons when it comes to life. One is of course for future human settlement. Another main reason for finding out if life used to exist on Mars or holds potential in the future is because Mars has the necessary compounds for life and it used to have liquid water millions of years ago when it still had an atmosphere. In fact, Mars had oceans like Earth does. This cold, barren, red planet was not always cold and barren. When it had an atmosphere, naturally the planet would have been slightly warmer. It had a water cycle because clearly there were large water bodies which we now know because of various kinds of findings such as Surface features carved by water like river flows, gorges or canyons or giant lakes and mineral deposits that can chemically indicate the presence of liquid water in the past. We've also found weathered rocks that are rounded and soft, something that happens because water flows over them and these pebbles also flow with the water for several thousand to millions of years. And of course, Mars has present day water ice. In fact, we've even had meteorites from Mars land on Earth and there is plenty of evidence that these meteorites were exposed to liquid water. Additionally, we found by radar on the European Space Agency, which is ESA's orbiting Mars Express mission, that there could potentially be pockets of underground or subsurface liquid water which could harbor life. One of our fundamental principles for life, where there's liquid water, there's potential for life. Water is fundamental to all processes of life. It is a universal solvent, which means it can dissolve most minerals and nutrients. It can flow so it can distribute these minerals and nutrients around areas. Evaporation of water causes water vapor, which can regulate temperature. It is in fact the strongest greenhouse gas as well. And water is a cradle for life. It's a good medium for various kinds of biochemical reactions to occur, potentially producing amino acids or proteins, which are fundamental building blocks for life. Life on Earth also evolved in water first before it moved to land after millions of years. The suspension medium 
makes water very conducive for primitive unicellular life to evolve and move around and get access to nutrients and minerals. Liquid water can also remain stable for a wide range of temperatures, 0 degrees to 100 degrees, of course, depending on the pressure. Water also absorbs infrared radiation, which means it can store heat. Water can freeze into ice and form sheets of ice that float on top of water, which ends up preserving the temperature and life underneath in water bodies during very cold seasons. And there are other complex properties of water as well that makes it play a very key role in sustaining life and for life's survival. It also makes life easier as compared to other mediums. So in astrobiology, the simple principle is follow liquid water. Liquid water exists on multiple bodies in our solar system, including Jupiter's moon Europa and Saturn's moon Enceladus, both of which are frozen white bodies with solid ice covering the surface and potentially harboring global oceans of liquid water underneath. We also think subsurface water exists on Ganymede, which is Jupiter's largest moon, Ceres, which is a dwarf planet in the asteroid belt, and Pluto. Naturally, all these bodies have a lot of interest for exploration and we've sent past missions to Ceres and Pluto and we're constantly planning and trying to get funding to send missions to Enceladus and Ganymede and there is one going in the future to Europa. Such missions though take a long time to plan and launch and execute as these bodies are farther away from Mars. Mars is much closer. However, we can't launch missions to Mars at any time. Launch windows are the ideal period for launching and they come about for a few weeks every 26 months. This is because of how Earth and Mars orbit. We know that a Martian orbit takes 1.88 Earth years and when we send spacecraft to Mars, what we aim to do is set it on the shortest path so that it takes the shortest time and consumes the least amount of fuel. So these spacecraft that are headed towards Mars typically launch for optimal efficiency when Mars in its orbit is moving towards its closest approach to Earth. This drastically cuts short the amount of time and the amount of distance that these missions have to travel. This is the reason why so many Mars missions launch together at the same time. Currently ongoing is this year's launch window to Mars. The previous launch window was in May 2018 where NASA sent its InSight lander which is currently on Mars and operational. Before that, in March 2016, Europe and Russia together sent the ExoMars Orbiter mission which also had the Schiaparelli lander which unfortunately crashed. And then before that, in November 2013, NASA sent its MAVEN mission and of course, ISRO sent its Mars Orbiter mission or Mangalyan. All in all, Mars is special and exciting. Mars is also unique in how similar it is to Earth and its potential to harbor life combined with the fact that it is easily accessible. And most interestingly, for now, Mars is the only planet to be entirely populated by robots.